21 seconds of hydraulic whirring, lifting and flirting. This is the mating ritual of the 24,000 pound Renault Megane CC. Not even a horny peacock can shimmy its tail like this. I think that is the most elaborate display I've ever seen. The designers clearly watched a lot of Transformers cartoons when they were kids. And they've done quite a good job, to be honest, because unlike a lot of coupe cabriolets, it manages to hide all its mechanical gubbins without looking too frumpy. And to a lot of potential customers, the tidy looks will be all that matters. But just as important in cars like this is the overall ownership experience. It needs to be nice to drive and generally lovely to live with. So, is it? First impression you get is that it feels pretty massive when you're trying to thread it through roads like this. It's actually only a foot longer than a normal began and barely any wider, but because you sit quite low down and you can't see any of the corners and you're conscious of the big rump sticking out the back, it does feel quite cumbersome and quite intimidating, to be honest. For the target audience of, let's say, ladies what lunch, that's probably not a good thing. They want something that they can feel in control of. Another reason why it feels so big is possibly because it's got quite a comfortable ride. It feels like quite a big, composed car. Over a standard Megane, the chassis has been strengthened and the suspension stiffened, but it doesn't seem to have suffered for it. But the Megane CC isn't immune from the Achilles heel of the convertible, scuttle shake. Without a roof tying the front and back axles together, they have a habit of doing their own thing. And over countryside roads like this, it is pretty noticeable. Over big bumps, you can see the windscreen shudder as the body vibrates and flexes. And even when you go over smaller ridges and just little creases in the road, you can hear the side windows creaking in their rubber seals. So, a feeling of girth, a bit of scuttle shake, but overall a smooth enough ride. The Megane CC is okay to drive, but is it really lovely to live with? First, space. Right, remember that roof routine right at the beginning? Well, let me show you where it went. There it is. With the roof down, you just get 200 litres of boot space, which isn't an awful lot. With it up, obviously the space doubles. So you're left with an awkward choice, fresh air or luggage. You can't have both. In fairness, it's no worse than its main rival, the VW EOS, which just happens to cost the same, come with a similar range of nippy petrol engines and 50 mile per gallon diesels, and has equally cramped back seats. But there are other niggles. The sat-nav and the stereo, two things that you'll interact with a lot in a car that's all about cruising around with some tunes on. The sat-nav actually uses TomTom -tom software, but because it isn't a touch screen, you have to use these controls down here, so it just doesn't have the logic of a standalone TomTom -tom unit. And the stereo is actually slightly worse. The menus don't seem to make any sense, and when you kind of work out what to press, there's a bit of a lag to the button it's not very responsive. And finally, the cup holder doesn't actually hold cups because the dash gets in the way. It's a bit annoying. An awkward sat-nav, an unresponsive stereo, and a flawed cup holder. But it's not all bad news. The interior design and materials are good, and that's not all. The McGann CC has a roof that's made entirely of glass. So even when it's up, the interior is light and airy and you don't have to worry about getting a sunburnt head because it's thermally treated glass and there is even a blind. Ooh. And now that the roof's up, the handling feels tauter, there's less scuttle shake and it's actually incredibly quiet. The 1.9 litre turbo diesel engine sounds very distant and there's hardly any wind noise at all even when you get up to speed. In fact, as a glass-roofed coupe, it works quite well. The sunshine of a convertible with less of the scuttle shape. Just like every other coupe cabriolet ever made, the Megane CC is flawed. It's got a piddly boot, cramped back seats, and a bit of body judder. But if you're absolutely convinced that you can't get by with a two-seat but better to drive Mazda MX-5, then it has got some little perks that make it all right to live with.